Hello, that's the new kitty, Henrietta. If you hear somebody meowing loudly. She seems to have adopted us for however long she wants to adopt us. She's a Siamese. Maybe someday she'll be friendly enough to jump in my lap. OK, the arithmetic of logarithms. Remember that logarithms are the inverse function of exponential functions. And they're very, very important because exponential functions grow so fast, so quickly that any kind of measurement is, is difficult to do because the numbers get so big so quickly. So we have to depend on the logarithms because they grow more slowly. So we can measure. The measuring is done over on the y-axis. You know, how big is fill in the blank. OK, so here I have, we're going to do this problem. This is the first problem in your homework, this is number one. But explanations first. Um, I've written a whole bunch of numbers here. This is 3 to the 5th, 7 to the 8th, 2 to the negative 1 power, 5 to the 11th power, 2 thirds to the 4th power, 13 to the 1 half power. Um, these numbers are actually made up of two levels. There's the base level. The bases are the big numbers that hold up the exponents. This is the exponent level. Okay. That's where exponential functions and logarithmic functions live, is up here on the exponent level. These are the numbers we're used to dealing with in daily life, down on the base level. So, if we go over, we are going to go over now, the basic rules of exponents, which we've got over a bunch of times this um, semester because they're so necessary. OK, well, let's go over first the product rule. X to the A times X to the B equals X to the A plus B. And here's an example. Um, yeah, let's, we could even use a number. How about that? How revolutionary. How about three to the two times three to the three? The bases are the same. So you write the base once and you add the exponents two plus three which is five, of course. Let's write that. Three to the fifth power. Okay, there's a matching logarithm rule called the product rule of logarithms. Now, last, last time on Monday, we went over the structure of logarithms and how to change back and forth, how to convert back and forth between exactly equivalent um, exponential equations and logarithmic equations. So by now, I hope you're, you're familiar with the basic structure of a logarithm. A log to any base, If in the argument you have two numbers or letters or whatever, 
that are multiplied together, that's going to equal log to any base that is log to this base times A plus log to that same base, has to be the same base, times C. And here is an example. How about log base three? Well, let's change that. Log base seven of two times four. Or better yet, because you could just say eight, couldn't you? So let's do this. How about log base seven of two X? of 2x, log base 7 of 2x. That's log base 7 of 2 plus log base 7 of x, whatever x is. So you have the product rule of exponents and the product rule of logarithms. Logarithms live up here on the exponent level. So if you can imagine what these rules, uh, the exponent rules would look like if you were an exponent living up here, this is what they would be. Okay, and now remember the exponent rules are true going back the other way. Um, for instance, three to the fifth power can be broken down into three to the two times three to the three. Or three to the one times three to the four. 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5. So it's true going back the other way. Over here, if you have something like log base 7 of 2 plus log base 7 of x, then you can push these together you can you can smoosh them, if you will, into log base seven of two x. So you can go either way. You can go from log base seven of two x equals log base seven of two plus log base seven of x, or you can go the other way. It depends on what you start with and what the um, instructions ask you to do. Okay, first rule. Usually the first rule you meet. Now, the uh, power rule. Of exponents. Is written in a formula way, if you have x, a base, raised to a power, and raised to a power again, you multiply the two powers together. Over here, you have a similar rule for logarithm. Oh, let me find, yeah. Suppose you have a base three and it's squared and then raise to the third power. Well, that would be three to the two times three, which would be three to the six. And then over here in logarithms, we have a very similar rule. If you have a log to any base,
of a number A raised to the C power, then what you do is you bring the C down in front and it multiplies log base B of A. And you can go the other way. But let's change this to numbers first. Suppose I have log base 7 of 2 to the third power. That could be written as 3 times log base 7 of 2. And sometimes, if you start out like this, life becomes more convenient, as you'll see on Monday, if we take that three and turn it into an exponent. Log base seven of two to the third power. And that would be log base seven of eight. Two times two times two is eight. So you have to get used to these. Over here, you could still do the same thing. If you start out with three to the six and there was some reason that you wanted to break it down, you could go backwards and say, well, okay, I could write this as three raised to the two power and then all that raised to the third power. If for some reason it suited you to do it, you needed to be able to do it. Now these are ideal for flashcards. You probably get tired of me saying that, but it's true. Okay, now we have the quotient rule. And suppose you have a base and it's raised to the A power and you've got a base and it's raised to the C power. You would write that, notice they have the same bases. The bases have to be the same. X to the A minus C. Use minus when you're when you're dividing, like bases. So for instance, we might have uh, three to the two over three to the three is three to the two minus three, which is three to the negative one, which is one over three to the positive one which would just be one third. Or if you have three to the third power, let's make it different, three to the fifth power over three to the second power, that would be three to the five minus two, which is three to the third power, which is by the way, 27. And that's with exponents. And just stuff, just stuff you've done. Now we're applying it to logarithms. Logarithms live up on the exponent level. If you have the log to any base, any kind of log, 
and in the argument of the function, you have division going on, then this is going to equal log base B of A minus log base B of C. Okay, so an example of this. Well, first, let's look back at the product rule. If you have log base B of two numbers or letters or a combination thereof that are multiplied together, that becomes log base B of the first number, excuse me, plus log base B of the second number. Well, here we have division going on. So log base B of A minus log base B of C. And an example might be log base seven. Of three fourths. And for some reason it suited you to write it. This way. or going back the other way, if you have log base seven of three minus log base seven of four, well, you could condense those, you could smush them into being log base seven of three fourths. Kitty, kitty, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, these are the three basic rules you're going to be working with. Along with, I don't know what the name of this is, but suppose you have a number. Raised to the power one. Well, that's just the number, right? So if you've got three to the one, that's just three. Not really higher math. Well, we have the same kind of rule over here in logarithms. If you've got a log to any base of that same number in the argument, then the answer is one. Because remember, what we have here, one is the exponent, b is the base, b to the one power, of course it's going to equal b. What else could it equal? Okay. So, putting it into these terms, suppose you have log base three of three, well, that's one. Okay. So logarithms live up here. Regular numbers live down here. Regular meaning rational numbers, the ones we're used to dealing with. The ones you first learn about when you're a little kid. Okay. 
So here we go, we're going to apply these rules to the following logarithmic expressions. Here we have log to base six, and in the argument we have two numbers that are multiplied together. That's going to give us log base six, six, that's a six, of 36, plus log base six, of 13. If I remember, the last thing we're going to do is come back to this and rewrite it. Well, we might as well. We could do it now. You know that 36 is six squared. So using the rules of logarithms, we would have log base six, of six squared plus log base six of 13. We can use the power rule to bring the two down in front. We'll have two times log base six of six plus log base six of 13. What is log base six of six? We just learned it, it's one. This whole thing here, log base six of six is one. So this is two times one plus, well, this doesn't change, log base six of 13. So the final answer is going to be 2 plus log base 6 of 13. Let me put a blue box around that. Okay, <clears throat> number two in your homework is the same rule. This is the product rule going back the other way. You have to learn to recognize them. So actually, I suppose I should write that. Wait a minute. This is the product rule. And this is the product rule. Log base t of eight plus log base t of 27. That means you're going to have log base t of eight times 27. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Eight times 27 is 216. So log base T of 216. All right, the product rule. Very straightforward. I kind of think of this as the product rule going forward and the product rule going backwards. But of course, it's just equivalency. But when you're a student, you start thinking these things. And it's as good a way to think of it as any other. The plus sign tips you off. Oh, must be the product rule. Okay, 
means the arguments are being multiplied. That times that. That becomes the new argument. And just for review, this is read log. I'm, I'm going to write the words log base T of 216. Those are the words you use when you say this log base T of 216. Okay. Ooh, we've got a power, so it must be the power rule. I always thought of this as being the really strange one because you take the exponent and bring it down in front. So you're going to have negative nine times log base P of R. And that's all there is to that. Let's make this a tad bigger, shall we? To make sure that you can see this. This is log base P of R to the negative nine. I want to write it again in case you can't see it. Log base P of R to the negative nine equals negative nine times log base P of R. And I write parentheses for two reasons. One, I was taught to always write parentheses with credit taken off if I didn't. Always put parentheses around the argument. My math lab doesn't force you to do that um, most of the time, unless you have more than one term like things. Well, we'll see. Um, um, another reason is that your calculator forces you to close all your parentheses or it will give you the wrong answer. So remember that too. All right, here, here we have an argument, G over nine, that's division. log base r of g over 9. This is the quotient rule. Log base r of g. If they write a capital G, you have to write a capital G. If they write a lowercase r, you write a lowercase r. That's the way mathematics and science is. If you take a science class, you'll see a big G and a little g used for different purposes. So you have to make it clear which you, which you are using. You'll have a big M and a little m and they're used for different purposes. So be careful to do that. Um, minus log base R of the denominator. Log, log, log base R of nine. And that's all you type. Remember, this is a subscript, okay? So you're gonna be using the subscript button in my math lab. These are on, the argument is on the same level as the log.
All right, here we have an argument that has 17z in it. 17z is 17 times z. That's the product rule. Remembering the names of the rules helps you remember what to do. Log base 9 of 17 plus log base 9 of Z. That's it. Same thing here. Except we have LN, but LN is just a log. Remember the LN, LN of YZ is just, I didn't need those, is just log base E of YZ. So it's just a log. E is a number that's about 2.7. But the decimal part goes on forever. It's irrational, just like pi. Pi is about 3.14, E is about 2.7. They're called universal constants. So the ln of yz equals the ln of y plus the ln of z. Ta da And this too is the product rule. And here we have the power rule. Log, no base, base 10. If you don't see a base down here, then the log is log base 10. The log of n to the 14th power equals 14 times the log of n. Period. The power rule. And here we have the power rule again, right below it. Just giving you practice with the basic problems before you have to go to the harder problems. It makes sense to do that. Here's your exponent, negative 10. Log base A, capital A, of lowercase t raised to the negative 10 power is negative 10 times log base A of lowercase t. All right, and that's the power rule. And then we have two quotient rules here. Quotient. And while I'm at it, quotient rule. All right, up here, the log of D over N equals the log of D minus the log of N. Again, no base means you really do have a base of 10. Down here, same thing before we move on to harder stuff. We have the ln of m over w equals the ln of m minus the ln of w. All 
Okay, the best thing, the best thing, the best thing, the best thing you could do for yourself is to get flashcards and write these rules and these basic problems on it. And then look at them over and over and over again. So, do you want to discuss any of this before we start applying multiple rules to the same problem? No. Okay. You certainly know how to get in touch with me. All right, we get bigger again then. Here we have, I think this is problem number 13, but I'm not sure. So I think it's problem number 13. But I, no, I shouldn't write it if I'm not sure. Okay, that minus sign. That means we have the quotient rule. So what this is going to equal, what the original problem says is log base 10 but we don't write the temp. So log of, and the argument is x squared plus 3x minus 10. And notice that my math lab uses parentheses here because there are three separate terms, okay, in the argument. So it's necessary to enclose all of them. Log of x squared plus 3x minus 10 minus log of x squared minus 25. That's going to give you the log of x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x squared minus 25. Now, it says, the instructions say, express as a single logarithm. Okay, we did that. We squished it together and now it's one logarithm. And if possible, simplify. That means factor and cancel. So we will have the log of going to be factoring. So let's see, x squared plus 3x minus 10, uh, negative 10 equals negative 5 times positive 2. Okay, I'll just write it up here. Negative 5 times positive 2. That's what negative 10 equals. And ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no, no. That would give me negative three, I need positive three. So slight alteration of plans. Positive five times negative two. And then over here we get the three by adding the five and the negative two. Cool. So our numbers are going to be plus five minus two on top. X plus five times X minus two. There. Okay, on the bottom we have the difference of two squares. X 
x five five plus minus. Now x plus five and x plus five cancel out. And so our final answer is log of x minus two over x minus five. Good, we have work. This, this will show you what the um, order of operations is, if you will, for logarithms. We go from the outside in. Okay, so we're going to be using multiple rules here together. The first one, is we work with the most easily identifiable thing about this problem. You have a numerator and you have a denominator. That means the very first rule you're going to use is the quotient rule. Log, log base b of p squared times q to the seventh minus log base p b of m to the third b to the seventh. That's the quotient rule. All right, now notice that within each argument, you have multiplication going on. This is p squared times q to the seventh. This is m cubed times b to the seventh. Are they both to the seventh? Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to use the product rule. log base b, let me make sure that's a b, yep, okay, log base b of p squared plus log base b of q to the seventh minus log base b of m to the third plus log base b of b to the seventh. And that is the product rule. Why did I capitalize quotient rule? I have no idea. I suppose the, the proper thing to do since they're the names, they're proper names, I should capitalize all of them, but I didn't do it. Don't tell any English teachers. OK, now I'm going to use the quotient rule. Um, I am not. I'm lying to you. I'm going to use the power rule. That will bring all of these exponents down in front. OK. 
three, uh, 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 that's a two. Two times log B of P plus seven times log B of Q minus, notice that I'm um, keeping these in brackets because there's so much going on, it just helps to keep them separated like that. I know that everything in here is the same as everything in there is the same as everything in here. And everything in here is the same as everything in there. This minus sign is going to be applying to everything in here and eventually I'm going to distribute the minus sign into this set of brackets. But right now I'm working one step at a time. It's a big mistake to try to do everything at once. So here we'll have three times log base B of M plus seven times log base B of B. But log base B of B is what? It's one. So, let's take care of that. This is one. Seven times one is seven. Okay, so let me write power rule. And I honestly don't know if log base B of B equals one if that's got a rule name or if it's just, it's just true. Okay, so here we go. Two times log base B of P plus seven times log base B of Q. Now I'm going to distribute the minus sign. Minus three log B of M minus seven. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our answer but I need to write distribution because that's the step I used here. I distributed, right? So distribution. Make that smaller. There. So the first thing I did was, you see I'm working with the bigger parts and then the sub parts, and then the sub sub parts. So here I'd use the quotient rule to separate the top from the bottom. Then I use the product rule because I have arguments in which uh, multiplication is going on. So I use the product rule here and here. Then because I have exponents, I use the power rule here and here. And in the process discovered that log base B of B, ooh, that's nice, it's one. 
And then I distributed that second um, minus sign. And you could think of it as, yeah, well, there's like an invisible one out there, so I'm distributing that as well. You could think of it that way. Um, and then this is your answer. This is your solution right here. Okay. Now here's another hard one. And you're going to have to remember the stuff from uh, Roots and Radicals that we worked on. We reviewed those at the very beginning or maybe when we were solving radical equations. But either way, I'm going to rewrite this so it's more understandable. This, this is log base C of the cube root of x to the fifth over y to the third z to the seventh. Okay, and this is my argument. Now, whenever you have a radical, remember you can write it as a rational fraction power. So this is log base C of X to the fifth over Y to the third Z to the seventh in parentheses to the one third power. And the parentheses are absolutely necessary here because that one third power applies to the whole thing because this entire fraction here was underneath the cube root radical. All right, so keeping on, that's what the equals is. It equals all this junk up here. Okay, now I am going to use the power rule to bring that one third down in front. One third log base C of x to the fifth over y to the third times c to the seventh. Okay, now looking a little bit ahead, I'm now going to have to use the quotient rule and I'll be taking log base c of this minus log base c of this but one third is going to apply to all of that. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to do something you really haven't had to do very much since pre-algebra. When you were studying order of operations. And that is use braces. Here's my goal. There's so much that's going to be going on in this problem. I'm going to be using braces. 
and then brackets, and then parentheses. Okay, just so you know, just so you remember that when we're using parentheses, 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 that's so confusing. So what we do is all we do is we're changing the shape. Yeah, that's too confusing. That way you can look at it and see, okay, I close that paren, I close that paren, I close that paren. That's why I'm doing it. Okay, so this is going to be one third bracket log base C of x to the fifth minus log base C of y to the third times z to the seventh. That's what I've got right now. And then, there's a product here. Oops, yeah, that's why I needed to use braces. Um, I've been doing this problem a lot in all my different classes. And I discovered I really have to use all three. Why? Because I'm going to be using the product rule in here because multiplication is going on later. Come back later. Multiplication is going to be going on in this argument. So I'm going to have to put brackets around that. Because I'll have log base C of y to the third plus log base Z, uh, log base C of z to the seventh in there. And then the minus sign will apply to both. Okay, just so you know what's going on. So I'll have one third brace log base c of x to the fifth minus bracket log base C of y to the third plus log base C of C to the seventh. Bracket closed, brace closed. All right, now, before I distribute, I'm going to use the power rule to bring down all my exponents. So I'll have one third brace five times log base C of X minus bracket three log base C of Y plus seven log base C of Z. In Europe, that's pronounced Z. And I've had lots of math teachers who use Z but I refuse. It's too much of a change. Okay, now onward. Now we're going to distribute this minus sign. We haven't applied the one third yet, but we will. Patience. 
log base C of X minus three log base C of Y minus this minus times plus is minus seven times log base C of Z. Now I really don't need any internal, um, I don't need those brackets anymore. So I've just got braces, so I could change to brackets, but let's not really. I've got two more steps. I am now going to distribute the one third to every term. So I will have one third times five times log base C of X minus one third times three times log base C of Y minus one third times seven times log base C of Z. And now I don't need any braces or brackets because I was, you see, I have to wait till the very bitter end to distribute that one third to every term in the braces. Now all I have to do is multiply them together. One third times five is five thirds. Times log base C of X minus one third times three is one. So this is log base C of Y minus one third times seven is seven thirds times log base C of Z. Ta-da! And I just didn't have room. I had to squish some steps together here. So like there are two steps here. I use the power rule to get the one third in front. Then I use the quotient rule. Then I use the product rule. Then I use the power rule. Then I use distribution. Then I use distribution. Then I used multiplication. And I could have written the rules I used down here, but like I said, there are two up here that I I had to, to save room. I should have put this problem on its own entire page. And I'll remember that for next semester. I hope. Okay, let us see. Now I know you've got questions about this and the only way they're going to get answered is for you to sit and work on this and copy each step and and figure out why it was done. This is the kind of stuff you have to really apply yourself to and work. This is probably the most important part. The most important stuff today that you can learn is these rules. Because we're going to be applying them on Monday and Wednesday. And then I won't see you again. I mean, I'll get your your final exams. 
or I'll work with you online. But hey, one more week and it's over. Woo! For many of you, this is the last class you need before you graduate. Try to end well. OK, I'm going to get you started on this one. This is the log of the square root of b to the seventh times c. The first thing you do when you have a radical is you figure out what kind of radical. We had a cube root up here, so we use the one third power. We've got a square root down here, so we use the one half power. OK, then. I'm going to see if I have room. One half. Using the power rule to bring this one half down in front times log of b to the seventh times c. And then I need brackets around this because I'm go going to use the power rule. One half times the log of b to the seventh plus the log of c. I guess I'm not just getting you started. Then I'm going to use the power rule to bring that seven down in front. One half bracket, seven times the log of B plus the log of C. Close bracket. Now I'm going to distribute the one half so I'll have one half times seven times log base B. These are puzzles plus one half times log of C. And one half times seven is seven halves. So seven halves times the log of B plus one half times the log of C. And here's your answer. So the first thing we did, I do have room here to use the power rule. Product rule. Uh, power rule. Distribution. And your answer. OK, we've got four minutes. Let's do one of these. The last two problems are smooshed together. All of these have been take apart. Now we're going to smoosh. Now we're going to smoosh. I like to smoosh. All right, now we kind of go backwards. This is going to equal log base A to the one half 
plus log of b. That this is log base 10. So log of a to the one half plus log of b to the third. Okay, so I use the power rule there. And here I'm, well, all right. Now I'm going to use the product rule. This will be log of a to the one half times b to the third. So that's the product rule. I can't use the product rule until I have log of an argument plus log of an argument. So that's why I had to put these powers up first. All right, now anything raised to the one half power is a square root. So this is going to be log of the square root of a times b to the third. And I, I could make up a name. <laughs> I could make up a name, I'm not gonna. Um, and then log, when we have a radical and something multiplied by something not under the radical, we move that in front. So b to the third times the square root of a. And there's your answer. And then finally, yeah, let's do this. We have to smoosh this together. This is already smooshed, the first term. Second term, though, is not. All right, this four is going to have to come up here. So we're going to have the ln of x to the sixth minus the ln of the fourth root of x to the fourth power. And of course, a fourth root and a fourth power, they undo each other. So this is going to be the ln of x to the sixth over, this is just gonna be x. So x to the sixth over x to the one is the ln of x to the 6 minus 1. So that's the ln of x to the 5th. This looked the worst by far, and um, it actually ended up being the easiest to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen and peeps, Um, I might as well do this, but you all are free to go. And I'll finish this up so that you'll have a complete video and complete notes of your homework and how to do it. And um, if you have questions about any of this, hang around. Or if you just want to watch and you can, just hang around. At 9 o'clock, I'll be jumping over to the help room though I may go to the restroom, my bathroom first. Okay. So this is going to be the ln of 8 minus the ln of 7 times x to the 7th times y. Ah. Oh. Time to take allergy medicine. The ln of 8 minus, okay, now I'm going to have to use the product rule here. The ln of 7 plus the ln of x to the 7th plus 
the ln of y. Now you can take another step and, and bring your seven down in front of that ln, or you could just say, well, what the heck? I know that I could just write the seven down here, and so erase the seven there and put it down here. I want to keep my steps separate because many of you are learning and everybody learns at a different rate. All right, so one more. LN seven plus bring that seven down. Seven LN X plus the LN of Y. Now I distribute that minus sign there and there and there. So I will have the ln of eight minus the ln of seven. No, that's not the ln of one. Plus seven times the ln of x. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. I'm distributing. My poor cats, when they hear that sound, it means don't do it. But I talk to myself the same way I talk to my cats. All right, minus and minus. There. There. See, and it says we're supposed to express in terms of sums and differences. So I'm not going to use the quotient rule here. You know, I would have the ln of eight over seven. They, they would not be happy. They would be very unhappy with me. So rather than get a wrong answer, I'm just gonna do what they say. All right, this is it. Questions. I expect that you'll have a lot. But thank goodness you have all, all um, um, weekend to learn this. You don't. You have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four days to learn this. The value of flashcards is you can take them with you wherever you go. Take them to work and flash them out every so often. OK, if there are no questions, I'll talk to you later and you can find me in the help room starting at nine o'clock ish. Bye bye.